This video is all about SWOT analysis, which is something that we see quite commonly in the research project. That being said, we don't always see it done effectively or accurately. So the purpose of this video is to give a bit of an overview and some examples of how SWOT analysis can be beneficial and to give some advice if you choose to include SWOT analysis on what it should look like. First and foremost, we know that SWOT analysis is a tool that we commonly use in the early stages of the research project. You might have done it in research practices as your first task as a tool to consider a potential topic. It's often used to analyse the viability of a research topic. So if you're deciding whether you should do the topic or not do the topic, a SWOT analysis is a great way to look at it. And of course, you should know SWOT stands for strengths, weaknesses, threats and opportunities. What you might not know, however, is that this is actually quite a common form of decision making in multiple industries. It's widely recognised for its input into project management worldwide and it's widely understood by experts and professionals. Now the reason why this is important is because if you go on to say, oh I've done a SWOT analysis, generally a professional will understand what that means. Now if you haven't done your analysis accurately, then that reflects negatively on you and your demonstrated understanding and consideration and a lack of skill in being able to show that particular approach. And this is a really common thing that I'm finding looking through student folios at the moment. We've got this concept where here's my SWOT analysis, but it's actually not done accurately. And as a result, one, it's not really shown to be overly useful. And secondly, similar to when we've talked about using inaccurate terms around validity and reliability, it actually demonstrates a lack of understanding when it should have the opposite effect. So we're going to talk through this, what it is, how it should work, and the features you should be trying to do in when you're using it. And you might choose to use this video and then go back and look at your SWOT analysis to make sure that it's more accurate and reflective of your consideration process. Let's get into it. So you've probably seen this before. Look, it's a simple enough sort of table. What I most commonly find is that what people write in strengths and opportunities is largely the same, and what they write in weaknesses and threats is largely the same, when that shouldn't be the case. So let's define this a little more. So strengths are regarded as internal factors. Now when I say internal, I'm really talking about things that you have. Now that might be things that you physically, you know, like maybe you have uh, at your home or in your possession, but it could also be traits or information that you have in your head. So prior knowledge and experience is an internal factor. If you're doing research topic on BMX riding and you are a professional BMX rider, well, that's a strength to the research project. All right. And when we talk about strengths, we're talking about things that have a positive impact on your project. So I have this thing, I have this knowledge, I have this resource, and it's going to help my research. Opportunities are what we call external factors. Now, in layman's terms, these are things that you do not have. But wouldn't it be great if you got them? The problem here is you can't necessarily control them. So an opportunity is often in research project, like the idea of interviewing someone. You know, I'm doing a medical based thing. This gives me, there's an opportunity to interview a medical professional. Okay, I'm gonna interview a doctor. Fantastic, wouldn't that be great? Wouldn't that have a positive impact on your project? The only problem is, you don't currently have that doctor, unless someone in your family is a doctor, in which case, you know, if your mum was a doctor, that might be a strength. But if you don't have that connection, well, it's an opportunity, it's something that would be great and have a positive impact on your project, but you can't actually control it, okay? So you can't control whether or not it is going to have that positive impact. You might call up a doctor and say, hey, can I interview you? But if they say no, there's nothing you can really do about that. You don't control them, you can't make them say yes, all of this kind of business. So they're an external factor in this case. They're things that would be good, but you don't have control over them. On the other side, we look at the negative elements. So an internal factor is, again, things that you have and you can control, but they have a negative impact on your project. Okay, so sometimes we look internally with this kind of stuff. So if you were looking to do something like a research project around bird watching at 5 a.m., but you have trouble getting up in the morning, well, that's a weakness. Yes, you can change it, it's gonna be difficult for you, and it's likely to have a negative impact on your choice to do that project. Same thing with threats, you know, negative impact, but these are external factors. These are things you don't have any control of. Now, the most classic one at the moment is like COVID-19. If you were planning to go and interview someone or go and visit somewhere or go and do some 
uh, observations or work experience or something like that, and COVID came up, and all of a sudden you were locked down in your home, well, that would have a negative impact on your project because you wouldn't be able to access all of those what are likely to have been opportunities you identified earlier. And you don't have any control of that. You can't control whether you're allowed out of your house or not if the government dictates it. So external factors are largely things that we don't have any control of. And another word for these are essentially risks. Like what's the likelihood of risk in regards to that? You know, if something happens in this case and I don't have any control of it, is that going to really kill my whole research project? So that's what you're weighing up. So let me give you a bit of an example to talk you through this. Okay, you can apply this uh, to research project, but I'm gonna do a research project example afterwards. All right, should I open a McDonald's at the Hub Shopping Complex? Oh, your mouth is probably watering just thinking about the concept of this. Oh, wouldn't it be great to have something so close to your school? But there's some issues in here, which I'm probably guessing that you might be able to think about, but we're gonna do this as a SWOT analysis, okay? So I'm going to decide whether or not, maybe I should quit my job as a teacher and start a McDonald's franchise uh, here in uh, Aberfall Park, but I'll see how this is gonna work out. So what are the strengths, okay? What are the things, let's say I'm a representative of McDonald's, okay? So I'm speaking for McDonald's. So my strengths are, well, people like McDonald's. You know, people know McDonald's, it's popular, it's doing well in Australia, like that's a strength, you know? That's, it's largely something I've got control of in the sense like brand recognition is a strength. You know, it's not necessarily something that, oh gee, it'll be great if this happens. It's already happened. People are familiar with it. We seem to have an appealing menu, you know, people seem to like it, you know, there's a strength there that if you put a McDonald's somewhere, people are generally going to go there because they know and they recognise and they like McDonald's. That's a strength, okay? Um, it's something that over time has been developed by the business and they've largely got control of it. Some weaknesses. Some people see McDonald's as a bit cheap and unhealthy. Okay, so that could be a weakness, you know, and that's something we could control because we could throw our whole menu out, we could buy better quality ingredients, all of that sort of stuff, but it's probably gonna cost us money, so it's unlikely that we'll do that, and that's a potential weakness to our business. Even though we've got control over what we serve, that's not necessarily cost effective. The menu is similar to other places. Again, that's something we could change if we wanted to, but at the moment it's a weakness. You know, if I'm driving past a Hungry Jack's and a McDonald's, and I'm dying for like a breakfast hash brown or something, it probably doesn't really bother me which one I go to. It depends what's more convenient or what's on the right side of the road. You know, no one's going to essentially cross the road for a McDonald's hash brown over a Hungry Jack's hash brown. So that's a weakness to them. It does also create litter and waste. You know, maybe this is a personal kind of thing, but I noticed, you know, when that Hungry Jack's came into the Hub Shopping Centre, gee, the waste just picked up. You know, a lot of people don't like that. Again, that's something they've got control of. They could just stop wrapping their uh, products in so much paper and stop giving out so many additional things that just turn into trash and make the whole area kind of not look, not look so good. But again, it's unlikely they're going to do that. So these are things within their control, but ultimately they're gonna have a negative impact on whether or not I set up this McDonald's in the Hub shopping complex. Opportunities, well, it goes without saying that people seem to like burgers at the Hub. There's a lot of burger places around and they all seem to be doing pretty well. So there's an opportunity there. Like if I make a burger place there too, then people will like burgers and they're probably gonna come and check it out. It is near a school and I'll tell you what, students love junk food and they love wasting their money on that junk food as well. So the fact it's near a school is an opportunity because if those students are coming out of their school gates and they see the big golden arches, it's likely they're gonna come across and be really interested in purchasing from me. So that's an opportunity. I could capitalize that market. People often complain in the area about a lack of places to eat. You know, there's not necessarily like, I guess if someone wanted to get a coffee in Aberfall Park or around the hub area, um, particularly maybe after hours, there's not that many places open, but if there was a, a McCafe or something like that, you know, there's an opportunity there to capitalize on an element of the market that possibly isn't open right now. You know, people could go to an on the run or a servo, but it might be nicer to go to a kind of cafe type of thing. Um, there doesn't seem to be anything like that right now. That's an opportunity, okay? There's something there. Now I can't control whether people will come or not, but I could suggest that maybe they will because there's nothing else like it, okay? So recognize the difference between strengths and weaknesses, okay? I know people like McDonald's, it's a popular place, that's a strength. Whether people will come to my McDonald's is not something I can control, that's an opportunity, okay? So where I place it is more about opportunity than strength. Last one is about threats. Look, the big threat of the elephant in the room 
is that there are already other burger places in the immediate area. There's a KFC, there's a Hungry Jack's, but there's even like up market places like Fuds. You can even get something from the Hub Chicken Shop. Like you can get a burger basically from everywhere all around the area. That's a threat. Because if someone feels like a burger, I've essentially got, you know, like a one in five or one in six chance that they're going to come to my place if all things considered. Um, they might prefer McDonald's, but they might just as easily prefer KFC. So that's a threat. Like I could sort of open this up and only get one in five people in the area. And that's not necessarily going to be sustainable. And I can't control where they're going to go. Not only that, there's other McDonald's not far away. There's the Happy Valley McDonald's. Um, you know, so if anyone who lives in Happy Valley probably wouldn't bother coming up to Applefall Park to go to McDonald's. They've got their own one. Um, and then there's one in Hallett Cove as well, which isn't far away either. And there's one just down the road as well, Darlington. So there's McDonald's everywhere. So I can't guarantee that if someone feels like McDonald's, that they're going to come to my McDonald's because there's very likely a closer McDonald's and that's going to affect my revenue as well. That's a threat. I can't control which McDonald's people are going to go to. I guess another element there is, you know, the shopping centre's a bit dated. A lot of people complain about the car park. So there's probably people who might be halfway between Happy Valley and the Hub and they might think, oh, I want to go to McDonald's or maybe I'll go to Happy Valley because I hate that Hub car park, you know, or I don't like that area or I don't like the shops or anything along that line. The infrastructure of the area is something I can't control. And if people have a negative view about it, there's nothing I can do about that. And that's a threat, you know, because if no one comes because they don't like the car park, well, that's going to affect my business and I can't do anything about it. So we get a bit of a sense here. Now, once we've done our SWOT analysis, and this is kind of the key thing, we need to ask ourselves some key questions. And this is what we do in the business world as well. This isn't just something we made up for students to keep them busy. Okay, this is a legitimate. So what do I do? Should I make a McDonald's at the Hub Shop Complex? Here's some key questions. Do the positives outweigh the negatives? Mm, if I look at this, it looks like the positives are sort of about on par and it looks like the negatives, you know, like strengths and weaknesses are sort of on par. It looks about even to me, okay? Um, and the other element there is like, do the internals outweigh the externals? Well, to me, it looks like there's probably more external factors, perhaps, than there are internal factors, or maybe it's the same. But the other thing to recognise is not everything is weighted at the same level of value. So that second question, how likely are these elements to occur? Um, you know, like how likely are, uh, I can say it's near a school, students love junk food. Okay, great. How likely is it that I'm going to get every student in the school every day? Probably not that likely. Um, there's already other burger places around the immediate area. How likely is someone to go to a different burger place than mine? Probably quite likely. You know, there's other McDonald's. How likely is that to be an issue? That's probably quite likely to be an issue, you know? So we sort of have to weigh these things up. Like, what's the best outcome? Well, I guess the best outcome is everyone decides they want to come to McDonald's and all the other places go out of business. But the worst outcome is that no one comes to McDonald's because there's so many other options and then I go out of business. Okay, so what's the risk versus reward factor here? Let me show you what a good SWOT reflect should look like. After conducting a SWOT analysis on whether I should start a McDonald's at the hub, I was able to determine that the threats, which included several competing fast food chains in the immediate area and the positioning to other McDonald's franchises, are created a high level of risk. Okay, so my determination here is, you know what, this is super risky. You know, if there were no threats, I'd be like, yep, I'm building it today, but this is like, there's a high level of risk here. I don't know, uh, while I know that McDonald's are popular and the opportunity to be in a school is good, the likelihood that the market is going to shift to me over the places that are already there is probably unlikely to be significant. You know, I'm not going to get like 100% retention. I'm going to get some people like McDonald's, but just as many people like Hungry Jacks and just as many people like KFC. So I'm probably not going to win in the fight against the other franchises, okay? It's unlikely that everyone's gonna give up on Hungry Jacks and KFC and come straight to me every day. So that's probably unlikely, but the threat is still high. Furthermore, a weakness of McDonald's is a similarity of its menu to that of Hungry Jacks, you know? So that's a, that's a big thing, like I'm setting up basically right next to a place that's got a, basically the exact same menu. At least people sometimes go to KFC because they say they like the chicken, but people don't go to McDonald's because they like the chicken over Hungry Jacks. You know, people have different preferences for burgers, but essentially they sell the same thing. So there's a lack of differentiated product to offer a sound competitive advantage in a small space. 
So with those things, when I've weighed up those things, I've decided, you know what, it's probably not a good idea for me to start a McDonald's in this area. So hopefully you can see how I've used this model to make my decision. Okay, that's really significant in this case. Let me give you a really quick, I'm not going to go into as much detail, but let me now show you, because you might say, well, that's got nothing to do with a research project. And it's true. So let me give you an exaggerated research project example. Okay, so I'm just going to talk you through this one. And I base this on really common things that students do. And I guess what I really want to show in this case is hopefully that the decision as a result of the SWOT analysis should be pretty clear, but a lot of students don't see the writing on the wall. So let's give this a go. Now, I've stuffed up the question at the top, which says, what mental health issues do murder victims suffer? Obviously, probably death would be the most uh, likely one. And I realise I missed that. It should actually be attempted murder victims. Okay, so, so you know, someone, oh, someone tried to kill me. What kind of mental health issues do I deal with after that traumatic event? All right? Now, this might seem pretty heavy, but I picked it because a lot of people in Research Project look at this stuff. They're really interested in criminals and serial killers and trauma and nature versus nurture and stuff that can be pretty intense and quite sensitive. So I've sort of picked an exaggerated variant of that just to illustrate some of the thinking that might come out. So strengths. This is the kind of thing I often see. I'm interested in the topic. Well, that is a strength, I guess. That's a good thing, you know? It's something you can control, and if you like it, that's important. I've got access at home to some books on trauma. Oh, great. So anything you've got at home is generally a strength. You know, you could pick it up at any time and read it, and it could be valuable. Good. My family have a subscription to The Australian. Well, that yeah, maybe that could be interesting. I've got a Netflix subscription to see documentaries, and there's some good stuff out there. That could be a strength. I have had a background with mental health issues, so I've got some understanding of their effect. Okay, well, that's a strength as well, I guess. Like, you understand how detrimental mental health issues can be, so there could be an emphatic kind of element in there. Uh, weaknesses. My mental health is often triggered by hearing the experience of, of others. Ooh, okay. Well, that is a weakness. Now, obviously, there's arguments here about can I control that or not, but it's something internal. It's an internal factor. Um, that you know about yourself, which could have a negative impact on your research. I struggle to concentrate and follow things through and I can be disorganized. Ooh, okay. So these are some things you've kind of looked at internally about yourself and you're sort of thinking, all right, okay, so I have these strengths. I've got some information at home that could be useful, but I do struggle to concentrate and I can be disorganized. All right, let's go a little bit further. So opportunities. I could interview an attempted murder victim and ask about their issues. Yeah, wouldn't, I'm sure that would serve your research really well if you were able to get hold of that opportunity. And my research might be helpful to future attempted murder victims if it is published. Oh well, yeah, there's a great opportunity there. You could become world famous. Threats. It's unlikely that an attempted murder victim would want to speak to a student about their mental health. This is a really common thing. Like often people say, oh, I'm going to talk to a criminal psychologist or I'm going to talk to a murderer or something like that. It's probably fairly unlikely. Um, in investigating this topic, you might actually struggle to find specific sources. Like, you know, it could be a bit like if, if you've based your whole thing on interviewing people, that's a threat, you know, because you can't control whether someone says yes to an interview or whether someone's even going to respond to you. And if all of your predicted sources are based around interview, well, that's a huge threat because you can't control that. And if it doesn't happen, it will negatively affect your research. The school might have issues with me researching such a sensitive topic, and you have to be aware of this. Some people kind of, I don't know, they get topics through the net, but when it comes, push comes to shove, the research project teacher needs to make a call as to whether or not this is acceptable to go forward with. So just be really conscious of that. Like if that's a threat, if there's a chance that your teacher might say, actually, I'm not going to allow you to do this, no matter how much work you've done becomes invalid. There's also, look at this, there's a threat that digging into this topic could cause harm. Like, you know, you kind of, try and let's say somehow you're successful in interviewing an attempted murder victim about their mental health and they have a breakdown while you're interviewing them well that's probably going to do more harm than good and you're not a counsellor you're not a professional um, you know if you tried to contact someone without any training or support that could be a huge threat I think what you can kind of get that I'm leaning towards this is this is, has been a useful use of the SWOT model in a research project context because you know, do the positives outweigh the negatives? No, okay? In this case, those negatives, particularly those threats, are massive. How likely are the external factors to actually take place? Well, you could interview an attempted murder victim and ask about issues, but I'd say that's probably not likely. 
uh, my research might be helpful to future attempted murder victims if it is published. Yes, that's true, but it's probably not likely. What is likely is that the school might have issues with it. Uh, what is likely is that no one's going to want to talk to you. And what is likely is that you could cause harm. So the threats, not only are there more of them, but they're also more likely to happen. Okay, so it's not looking good. The strengths in this case, you know, are largely, they're okay, but they're quite superficial. Like they might not, you've got control of your Netflix subscription, but they not, might not be a good source on there. And the same with the Australian. Yeah, that's a strength, but that doesn't mean there's going to be stories in the Australian about the mental health issues by attempted murder victims. So your strengths don't really counter or make up for the significance of the threats in this case. So again, in my reflection on this, I'd be weighing up the, those things. I'd be showing how I'm comparing these things one to the other and ultimately how I'm making my decision. So the summary of this is, look, if you're going to include a SWOT analysis, make sure that you show an accurate understanding of how to use the model. You need those internal and external positive and negative features to be really distinct and clear. If it all just looks the same, it's not worth including. Make sure you exercise the process of weighing up the positives and negatives, internals versus externals. If you don't do the consideration afterwards, then you haven't done it properly. And again, it's not really worth doing. Make sure you're specific on your decision making as a result of the process and share examples of critical considerations and their weighting. I wanted to do this, but the threat of blah, blah was more significant than the possible opportunity of blah, blah. Or I, I felt I had a strength in this, but the possibility or my weakness in this was ultimately more of an issue than the strength would compensate for. So I chose not to do it. Make sure you're weighing these things up and you should have a much better quality of analysis.